and welcome back to the Left Bench TV. I'm Kevin McNulty. And I'm Katie Marr. It's been a year since we've produced one of our studio shows and filled you in on everything going on in the world of Maryland sports. But with the sports drought over and the University of Maryland now playing over 10 sports at once, we are happy to be back covering the Terps and producing our shows. For the time being, we'll be broadcasting to you from our homes in order to stay safe in the fight against COVID-19. And this is a great week to start things up again as we have officially entered March and college basketball fans know what that means. For the sixth time in seven years, the Maryland women's basketball team are your Big Ten regular season champions. The Terps secured sole possession of the title Saturday after rolling over Penn State. Our Reese Levin was there to watch the team cut down the nets. Thanks, Katie and Kevin. After clinching a share of the regular season Big Ten title against Michigan, the Maryland women's basketball team clinched the title outright Saturday after beating Penn State 88-61. to Five Terps finished in double figures with Chloe Bibby leading the way. The Australian had a team-high 15 points going 7-9 of nine from the floor. With this win, the team closes the regular season on a 10-game winning streak to go along with their sixth Big Ten title. You know, is the reason why I wanted to do it this year is um, it did hit differently. I mean, you know, I think we all recognize the fact that we're in a pandemic and, um, you know, there's nothing guaranteed for tomorrow. Um, you know, so, you know, our, our purpose is to continue to play. But we saw a year ago when we were shut down completely and weren't able to play in the NCAA tournament. So we don't want to take anything for granted. Um, we want to, you know, cherish this body of work that, that our players and staff and everybody has put in. And, um, you know, we just don't want to take it for granted. We'll have to see how far this team can go in March, but in my eyes, they're looking like a Final Four contender. Reporting from the Xfinity Center for the Left Bench TV, I'm Reese Levin. Back to you, Katie and Kevin. Thanks, Reese. The Terps are the one seed in the Big Ten tournament and therefore have received a first round bye. On Thursday morning, they'll be taking on the winner of the Nebraska Minnesota game at 11 a.m. And more great news for the women's team head coach Brenda Fries has officially been named Big Ten Coach of the Year for the fourth time, her third time with Maryland. The men's basketball team just finished up their regular season as well, but didn't find quite the same success as the women did. Seniors Dara Morsell, Reese Mona, and Galen Smith were all honored on Sunday night in their last home game against Penn State. Our reporter Annabelle Jansons was there for the action. The Maryland men's basketball team ended regular season play in an all-out battle against Penn State. Things fell apart with just under two minutes left and the Terps dropped the game 66-61. The Terps hit the ground running, going 12-0 less than five minutes in until Penn State answered with a nine-point run of their own. Maryland was still able to keep Penn State trailing behind, ending the half 33-23. Our offense was good enough tonight to win, we make those front end one and ones and, and we guard the way we're supposed to guard, we, we should still win the game. In the second half, Penn State came out of the locker room ready to catch up, forcing 13 turnovers by the end of the night. Got to, got to be better with our decision making. Um, can't always try to make the home runs, got to make the simple plays. Things were still a little too close for comfort in the nail biter of a second half, with Penn State unexpectedly closing the gap. It got momentum going towards the end of the second half, making tough shots and getting to the basket. and. I mean, you got to give them credit. They, they executed. We were doing so many good things. We were playing so well. And um, we were winning the whole game. At the 123 mark, Penn State stole the show, making it Maryland's second loss in a row after a five game winning streak. Just didn't finish the game. So it hurts. But I mean, we'll remember it. Got to put it past us and be prepared for a tournament ahead of us. Thanks, Annabelle. The men are also starting their Big Ten tournament on Thursday morning, sitting at the eighth seed, taking on ninth seeded Michigan State at 11.30 a.m. Should the Terps come out on top, the road to a championship trophy is daunting, as they would then have to face top seeded Michigan. But some better news came for Maryland men's basketball today, as Daryl Morsell was named the 2021 Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. He's also the first player in program history to earn the title. And it's well deserved as Marcel has led the Terps to be the second best scoring defense in the conference. Eric Ayala and former Big Ten Sixth Man of the Year Aaron Wiggins also received all Big Ten honorable mentions. 
Maryland, Johns Hopkins, the rivalry. Every fan of college lacrosse knows what those words mean, and the rivalry was revived this past weekend. On Saturday, the number three Terps broke conference play to host Johns Hopkins, and they rolled right past them. I was at Capital One Field to catch their statement 18 to 10 win against the number 20 Blue Jays. Here at Capital One Field, the rivalry was back up and running as Maryland men's lacrosse hosted Johns Hopkins for the first time since 2019. It was neck and neck as the Terps and the Blue Jays ended the first half tied at seven. After coming back out, Maryland went on a 9-0 run, holding up the rivalry trophy in the end. Through all the action, fifth-year senior Jared Bernhardt now stands at fourth in the program for most goals scored, and senior Logan Wisnowskis hit a career high of nine points, consisting of another career high seven assists. The defense showed out too. Sophomore goalie Logan McNamee had 11 saves and senior defender Nick Grill caused three turnovers and four ground balls. The undefeated Terps will host number four Rutgers this Saturday for a top five matchup. You can watch the game live on the Big Ten Network at 3 p.m., but be sure to catch our coverage as well. Sasha Swarovski has done nothing but win in his 27 years at the helm of the Maryland men's soccer. So this year's 0-3 start to the season was uncharted territory for the program. The Terps had a chance to turn the tide on Sunday, and they made the most of it. I was at Ludwig Field for their hard fought 1-0 win over Wisconsin. Maryland men's soccer was back at Ludwig Field Sunday, looking for their first win of the 2021 campaign. It was a slow start for both Maryland and Wisconsin in the first half, with the two teams combining for just six shots. But Maryland began to put the pressure on going into the second. First, it was Paul Bin coming up short with this shot. Then Brian Padilla so close with the bicycle kick, but still no score. Finally, 63rd minute, freshman Jason Russell Rowe finds the back of the net for his second goal of the season. And it ended up being the last goal of the game as Maryland's defense tightened up for the final 27 minutes, securing the Terps' first win of 2021. The Terps will travel to take on Michigan this Thursday, where Coach Swarovski will be searching for his 400th win as Maryland head coach. And from the field to the balance beam, after placing third in the Big Five meet, the Maryland gymnastics team pulled out a win against Rutgers at home last Wednesday night. Our Tina Qualiata was there to catch every flip. Thanks, Katie and Kevin. I'm here at Xfinity Center, where Maryland took on Rutgers, looking to bounce back from last Friday's loss. Audrey Barber took first place overall and led the Terps to another Big Ten victory against the Scarlet Knights. Barber scored a 9.9 .9 in the bars and secured the win with a 9.9 .9 on the floor. Sophomore Reese McClure led the Terps on, on beam with 9.875. The final score came out to 196.025 to 194.6. Thanks, and back to you guys at the desk. The Jim Terps will be honoring their seniors this Friday for the last meet of the regular season. Be sure to catch our coverage as they take on the Michigan Wolverines at 5 p.m. The Maryland women's soccer team remains on the hunt for their first win of the season. The Terps took to Ludwig Field on Sunday to host Indiana, but were unsuccessful against the Hoosiers. Haley Allen was there with the coverage. Thanks, Katie and Kevin. Welcome to Ludwig Field. The Terps battled for 90 minutes chasing their first win of the season, but fell short with Indiana securing the 3-2 lead in the 82nd minute. The first half, the Hoosiers controlled much the play, with 14 shots on goal. However, Maryland's defense held strong, only allowing one goal. Alyssa Porch netted the first goal for the Terps in the 19th minute to head into the second half with a 1-1 tie. After the break, Maryland came out hungry, but Indiana struck first in the 55th minute. Maryland's Kira Wynn scored late to bring the score to a tie once again. The Hoosiers nailed a header goal off a corner just one minute later to bring the final score to 3-2. The Terps will continue their time at home as they prepare to face Rutgers this Saturday at 2 p.m. We'll have the recap of their next attempt to grab their first win. As the world of sports media evolves, athletes are using their platforms to raise their voices more than ever. This now includes college athletes and Maryland Athletics has noticed. The department recently announced the launching of a program to help their student athletes efficiently build their brands. I virtually sat down with Associate Athletic Director Jason Yellen to learn more about Momentum. 
It's more common than ever for athletes to really use their platform. So Maryland Athletics recently announced the launching of Momentum, a program to help student athletes do just that. Momentum is powered by a partnership with Open Doors, a partnership that has proven successful for athletes on all levels. Uh, Open Doors is a national leader really in building brands uh, in athletics. They work with hundreds of universities, thousands of athletes on all levels. We're able to share with them their photos, graphics, videos. Uh, there's educational component to it, again, like kind of teaching them like what best practices would be. The world is far past the days of athletes only being able to speak at press conferences or in interviews. So Maryland Athletics has adjusted to these changes. You know, there's a whole other component to it, you know, and that, that's a lot of what goes on with their personal brands, with their social media. Every student athlete now has their own, I would say their own individual megaphone. But ultimately the program is for the good of Maryland athletes. We are just trying to get them prepared and get them ready and get them educated amplify and elevate their voices, you know, so that they can maximize all their platforms. The partnership with Open Doors is good for four years, so Turk fans should expect to see its effects very soon. For the Left Bench TV from the Xfinity Center, I'm Katie Marr. Pretty cool way for Maryland athletes to make their voice heard. Yes, I'm definitely excited for it, but I might be even more excited to watch some Big Ten basketball this Thursday. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, I'll have to be flipping the channels between the men and the women playing half hour apart. I don't know who scheduled that one. Don't know, but that definitely sounds like the plan we'll have to go with. That does it for this edition of the Left Bench TV. We hope you have a great rest of your week and enjoy cheering on the Terps this week. And be sure to follow all of our coverage on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Left Bench. We'll see you next time.